Hello there friends and welcome for today's Warhammer Rogue Trader Guide we have all about Ulfar, the Space Wolf Marine. And we'll of course be going with burst weapons for the biggest weapons possible with the biggest bursts. As a matter of fact, you'll get to hit even higher than 300 damage per burst and you have around 24 bursts per attack to easily destroy not only single powerful enemies but also multiple enemies at once, as they'll simply melt from your powerful burst attacks. As a matter of fact, even enemy bosses on Unfair, no matter how powerful their defenses are, will not be able to withstand the power of your Space Marine minigun bursts, for thousands of damage potential per single burst attack. Lastly, you'll be quite mobile as well, capable of charging through the battlefield multiple times as to easily catch even enemies that are far away in your burst attacks for easy kills before the enemies can do anything at all. Your damage is so high that most of the times your burst attacks will go to waste because, well, you'll kill the enemy way before the rest of your burst shots hits them. So without further ado, let us get into our Ulfar Burst God build. Ulfar comes at level 20, which is kinda sad because by default you cannot customize his starter soldier talents at all unless you go with mods. Even Arc Militant, he cannot be respect out of it in the first few picks, but the good thing is Arc Militant is amazing for a burst weapon user, so it's exactly what we want. Sadly, a lot of the soldier talents aren't really as optimal as I'd like. But anyways, for level 21, always ready, always, so that you already begin combat with more stacks of versatility and a higher versatility, well, the more damage, two hits chance and also critical chance. For stats, the higher your ballistic skills, the better, so let's start increasing it. For your first Arc Militant power, I'd go with Reckless Rush. Wildfire is also amazing and you'll have enough space for it later. As a matter of fact, it kinda doesn't matter what you pick first, because by the time you recruit Ulfar, you'll be at what, level 30 or so? so you'll get both of these at the same time when leveling him up. Anyways, Reckless Rush is super good. It has the power of doubling your versatility stacks, which by itself is already amazing, and even provides you with a huge amount of extra movement, so we can close in the distance and burst more enemies down, especially when doing it multiple times per turn. The downside of losing all stacks of versatility at the end of the turn doesn't matter at all, because, well, chances are the enemies will be dead by then. Also, it's not at the end of your turn, it's rather at the end of the first true battle turn, that is, after all enemies and allies have acted. And you can actually just keep increasing and activating this more and more and more, even when provided with extra turns, for loads of extra versatility stacks. For the first generic talent, it's all about heavy weapons, baby. So first... Heavy Weapon Proficiency. You don't really need this to equip heavy weapons, especially for Ulfar, but it is a prerequisite for other talents we want. As far as his skills is going to depend on what other party members you have. Ideally Athletics, unless you have, let's say, Abelard or Heinrichs, in which case go for Demolition, unless you will have Argenta. If you have both, you might as well pick Awareness. I'll be going with Athletics, because I won't have Abelard or Heinrichs in my parties with him. For another Arc Militant talent, Heavy Gunner is definitely the way to go. With this, your Heavy Weapon Burst Attacks will cost minus one action point, which means, for the best one, at Act 3 anyways, it's just one single AP per Burst Attack. Perfect for the extra turns when you only have around 2 AP, because you can activate Rapid Fire for 1 AP and double the Burst, and then still attack, all in the same extra turn, which of course you can repeat again and again, depending on how many officers you have. Once you max Ballistic skills, well, you have a few different options. Weapon skill can be picked, but it kinda doesn't matter for this build, there's just one Arc Militant talent that increases your Ballistic skill based on weapon skill, but you'll still have around 15, even without increasing it. Perception, on the other hand, can reduce enemy dodge, while Agility can highly increase your initiative and has synergy with some of the soldier's abilities. I'd rather go with Agility, just for higher initiative if needed. Then Overpower. When firing heavy weapons, you'll get a huge bonus to both critical hits chance and critical damage, a must have for any heavy weapon user. After that, you might as well pick the Discipline feat, 
so that whenever you get an extra turn, that's also a plus one stack of versatility, which combines amazingly, of course, with Reckless Rush to double it, then more athletics, and more agility. For the first upgrade to your Arc Militant Heroic Action, it kinda doesn't matter, but you might as well pick the last one, so you can combine it with the Soldier's own Heroic Action. Then for level 28, more athletics, and all out. With this, so long as you have stacks of versatility, which is always because of always ready, Reckless Rush will now cost 0 action points, which has extreme synergy with burst attacks, and of course Heavy Gunner. While you could pick this first, because like I said, all 4 will start at around level 30 plus, you'll just get all the best ones at once. Once you max agility, you might as well go for more perception. And Breaking Point, another very good heavy weapon feat. So now you deal an extra 2 points of damage per burst, and also ignore 2 deflection. For another Arc Militant power, it's time for Wildfire, which can provide you with even more burst attacks per turn, even without officers. Considering how easy it is to get loads of versatility stacks to Reckless Rush, you can even reduce the cost of this to zero for essentially a free attack. For the next talent, you might as well go with Critical Versatility, which highly increases your critical damage for every stack of versatility. Then more Perception, and more Athletics. For the next talent, you have a few different options, as it is the last Arc Militant talent besides Exemplar Progression. I just go for Flash Fire so that your Wildfire costs will be reduced even further, which means it's even easier to get to 0 AP only for a free attack at no cost. Then more Perception, and well, you might as well increase toughness now, or weapon skill if you prefer. Lastly, Solid Projectile Weapon Expert, which increases the minimum damage of the best heavy turret, at least as far as the highest rate of fire. The more minimum damage, the better, because like I said, the more flat damage, well, the heavier your burst damage, and any other upgrade to steady superiority. Might as well go for the third one so your attacks won't spend MP. Now let's cover Exemplar Progression. As always, there's a lot of powerful talents here for more damage, starting with Extermination, which increases your damage by a flat plus one for every attack you make. The key to getting loads of extra burst damage is to proc Extermination by using your Soldier Heroic Action, which will let you attack around 12 times with single shots from your burst weapon, for plus 12 extra damage, even higher when you consider all other attacks you're performing. Relying just on burst isn't good enough for this, because no matter how many shots you're firing per burst, it only counts as one attack. After that, we finally get to pick Soldier Talents, which Ofer desperately needs. I'd love to pick Point Blank, because it can highly increase your armor penetration and also reduce the enemy's deflection, to things you really need, it's just that as far as I've tested, this is bugged at the moment, they're not doing anything at all, just save it from when it's actually fixed. You might as well go for a fired up, so that whenever you deal damage, your critical damage will be increased, and you're always dealing loads of damage. But there's also Wreck and Ruin, Muzzle Velocity, even Tenderize can work if you want, or Camaraderie, but chances are you'll be moving a lot to burst enemies, so allies won't be as close as with a sniper character. I'll just go for fired up then back to Athletics or whatever skill you want, and you might as well pick Broad Expertise now, then more Ballistic skill, and as a generic talent, as you have the best ones already, I would just get even more increases to Ballistic skill, because it is your most important stat. For 39 we can at last pick a second Soldier Power, which is extremely important for maximum burst damage, Concentrated Fire, which can increase your burst damage by higher than even 300% with loads of extra dodge reduction. It's kind of a sin that Ofer doesn't start with this as a soldier. It's why I say it's kind of sad you can't respect him from the start. The more athletics, and for level 40 in the second exemplar talent, pick either deadly aim, which at this point can provide loads of extra damage, even higher than 100%, or cataclysm. Then you might as well pick accustomed to glory for more flat damage sources, which can easily be spammed before enemies get to do anything at this point then more Ballistic skill, and the feats I mentioned before for Soldier. Let's pick Muzzle Velocity now. 
for another Arc Militant power. They kind of don't matter, you already have the best ones, but you might as well go with Devastating Attack. Then more Ballistic Skill and Exploit Weakness. It's very easy to proc this by just having Cassio or Pascal reduce the enemy's armor. Anything else you want for a generic talent, including a stat increase. Let's say more agility or perception. Once you max your main skill well, just focus on the other ones I mentioned. Like let's say... Awareness or Demolition, even Carouse. And for the last exemplar talent, at level 45 at least, might as well pick Deadly Aim to finish all of the damage boosting ones, Extermination, Cataclysm, and now this. And that's it for exemplar progression. Alright, and let's do a quick section on how to play as your Ofer, the Space Marine. As always, you'll want to start by buffing his stats with an officer ally a must-have on Unfair, especially for any ranged character, no matter if Burst or Sniper. First with Voice of Command and then Air of Authority. This will highly increase not only your ballistic skills, but also perception for way less enemy dodge, more to hit chance, and more criticals. And with any officer, you can always provide Ofar with an extra turn. Ideally, during this extra turn, because we have the Reckless Rush ability at 0 AP cost, you can already activate it to double your versatility stacks, so we now have 6 right at the start of battle. You can of course move closer to the enemies if you want, and go for your first burst hit, which will most likely destroy some enemy packs. As you'll have around 2 AP from an extra turn, well, go with either Concentrated Fire for more area of effect damage or Rapid Fire for more burst shots. Because of how high our damage is, I just go for the normal burst fire at 12, so I'll activate Concentrated Fire, which also reduces the enemy's dodge. As we have enough stacks, you can even go for Wildfire first, so that your burst will cause 0 AP, while also providing versatility. Sadly, we didn't get you hitting enemy to the side here, but guess what, we are at high momentum already, so Ofar can just activate his Firearm Mastery Heroic action and begin increasing his Extermination stacks for more flat damage by targeting enemies one by one. Ideally, the enemies that are far away, it doesn't matter if you won't be dealing high damage. What matters is the more attacks you have, the more flat damage you get for your true burst against, let's say, the boss or whatever other super tough enemy you'll be facing, all through the extermination ability. Plus, of course, by killing enemies with these free attacks, you will max out your momentum again, so that one of your officer allies can cast Finest Hour on you. Well, let's keep going. Once you get enough attacks, you can just pass. It will go back to an officer who can then provide you with finest hour or more buffs. Ideally, inspire because you already generated a lot of tactical advantage for them by killing enemies. This will provide an absurd amount of extra damage to you. Already done. Which is of course amazing for burst because well, the more flat damage, the more damage you're adding per burst shot. Also linchpin from more resolve, take aim so your next burst attack will ignore enemy dodge and deal great enough damage, and lastly just air of authority for more resolve and more focus benefits, so now our focus is already at 132. That's why I say it's so good to have an officer ally. With close to 400 ballistic skill. What's not you love, right? And of course we can then go for finest hour. Assuming this was a first normal turn, well, you of course want to move closer to the toughest targets to burst them into submission. Thankfully, once again, you can activate Reckless Rush to grant you even more stacks of versatility. We have 44, and the enemies have yet to act. Reveling Slaughter for more critical damage, although you can always activate Run and Gun first because it will be refreshed if you prefer. It just doesn't matter for this battle because we are kind of destroying everything anyways. So let's move close enough to the boss here, the closer the better, so that your burst will always hit. I challenge you, and well, when you are going all out, you can definitely just activate all of your powerful buffs, such as Reveling Slaughter, Rapid Fire, Concentrated Fire, and just burst with 28 shots per attack. 
each dealing quite a lot of damage, despite the fact the boss has higher than 40 deflection and more than 100 armor. You can even turn wildfire on because, depending on how high your versatility stacks are, it will cost 0 AP. And there you go, you just burst the boss into complete and utter submission. Doesn't matter how high their hit points are, even if they restore health afterwards, they will explode into tiny pieces. As far as other ally buffs, Pascal is the best friend of any burst weapon user, especially early because his Machine Spirit Communion unique ability will highly reduce the recoil of burst weapons, and the best burst weapons with the highest rate of fire tend to have high recoil. Ideally, you also want to target some enemies with this if you can, to reduce their dodge chances. Don't forget joint analysis for even more extra flat damage. And while the rest is on a case-by-case -case basis, such as analyze enemies followed by expose weakness because this boss has extreme defenses. And if you went with my Pascal build, you also have the strategy zone buffs, including rear for more damage or frontline dropped on top of the enemy. And when it comes to Cassia, I like casting Reveal the Light on Ulfar just to make him extra tanky, not that he really needs extra willpower and toughness, but with an infusing staff, it's another plus 10 to all of his stats. Don't forget the buffing bosses, for example, 3800 hit points, well, just cast Waking Nightmare and there we go, 1000 less HP. But most importantly, point of curiosity to draw enemies close together which of course makes them even better targets for bursting. Alright, now let us cover gear for our O for the Space Marine, and honestly, he is in a pretty poor spot, because as you can see here, he cannot equip almost all gear in the game, thus the red background. Outside of accessories, talismans, and that's pretty much it. Which also sadly prevents him from equipping the best burst weapon boosting gear. Anyways, he can still be good enough without it. For the talisman, I like the focusing sense, so that you get even more perception whenever you activate Reveling Slaughter, which is based on how many enemies you're killing, a lot with this build. The long range aim lens for an accessory for higher range on your attacks, ideally for when using your single shots from burst weapons, when buffed through the soldier heroic action, and for the other slot, you might as well go with the White Signet of the Inquisition if you plan on having him as your main damage dealer, because at least you can increase your party's momentum by a huge amount in one go. But anything else also works, it's just that there isn't really anything that special for him. And while you can upgrade his main power armor, I believe, it also doesn't matter because you're just bursting everything to submission before they can do anything. Speaking about bursting enemies, our weapons are pretty important. Thankfully, by the time you get O4, you can already have one of the best heavy burst weapons in the game. The Calibrated Heavy Stubber from the Casbalica Mission Faction. It has pretty much the highest base rate of fire, 14 by default or 28 with rapid fire, or 16 when buffed with your heroic action. While the damage is pretty low, it is extremely easy to increase this to enormous amounts, as I've already explained in the how to play section. So even 3 to 6 can become 300 plus. For Act 4, however, you can also go with the improved Heavy Bolter from the Fellowship of the Void faction as one of the ultimate rewards. It has lower base rate of fire, 6 instead of 12, but way higher base damage with the very unique and quite powerful property of increasing your rate of fire by plus one whenever you kill an enemy, which I think is a bit bugged, so kinda disappointing. Anyways, both weapons are fine enough. I'd rather the Heavy Stubber because I think it looks amazing for Ofar, as it is a bigger weapon than the Bolter. And that's pretty much it for our Ofar Space Marine Burst God build. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends.